That's the only announcement I have this e evening. At this time, we'll move on to uh, uh, item one on our agenda. Madam Clerk, I don't know. Yeah, the, uh, that's a good question in terms of process. We have uh, a, actually no, that's not really true. Um, if you table this tonight or take no action, then it will sit in the town clerk's office where it's been filed for the next 30 days. If it's not taken up again by the council, it will become a new contract. If it's rejected that will, tonight, that will, that will trigger an arbitration process starting tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, yes. And that's not our control. It's a tight statutory timeline, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, everybody have a copy of the handout? Mr. Longo is going to um, go ahead and uh, sort of summarize this. And I will caution the council to let you know that some of the salary figures are uh, rock solid. The insurance figures uh, are suppositions and are really best the worst case scenarios, the most conservative numbers we could come up with, but a lot of the insurance numbers will depend on size of the pool, <coughs> claims history of the pool. Obviously, we're going to have less employees next year because there are uh, positions, not people that are being eliminated, and because we're hiring people for the to backfill the early retirement, we're going to have a younger pool as well. So it's a little confusing, but we try to give you the best picture as we can. So, Mr. Lyman, go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, members of the council. Before you this evening, you have an estimated cost comparison of the two contracts. They are labeled as the original ratified contract, uh, which you, at your last uh, meeting or special meeting, um, had reviewed and uh, sent back uh, to the Board of Education and the NEA Danbury to uh, mediate the contract uh, further. Uh, this evening, um, I'm glad to inform the, the Council that both parties, uh, through mediation, have come to terms and earlier this uh, evening, both parties have ratified the agreement. Uh, while I can speak obviously to the financial impact and analysis of the two ratified agreements, I will uh, respectfully ask that I defer any questions regarding contractual language changes to my colleague, Mr. Gray, who's our HR director. An analysis of the financial conditions, the original ratified contract called for an annual increase of 4.25% for both of the two upcoming years, fiscal year period 09-10 and 2010-2011. The current baseline is $57,996,000, approximately $58 million cost boom. When we inflate the $58 million cost boost uh, by four and a quarter percent, the cost estimate for year one is $60,462,000. So the original contract would have cost the Board of Education and the taxpayers of Danbury approximately $2.5 million. In year two of the contract, I apply a four and a quarter percent cost inflator to the year one value of $60 million. And as you can see, by the end of the second fiscal year, the total cost would amount to $63,031,000 or for year two, approximately $2.5 million of additional costs. A two-year total salary increase under the original contract <coughs> is valued at approximately $5 million. Over the two years, with some compounding interest, the total increase would amount to 8.68 percent or averaging approximately 4.34% general wage uh, increase, a salary increase 
for each of the two years. As compared to the mediated and ratified agreement which is before you this evening. Again, we work off the current baseline appropriation of $58 million. In year one, the parties have agreed to a total cost increase of 3%. The 3% will be paid in semi-annual installments. 1.5% on the first day of the fiscal year and 1.5% at approximately the six month interval. The effective rate for year one is approximately two and a quarter percent, 2.26 percent to be accurate. The employee will have not will not have realized a full three percent during the course of the first year, given that it's an installment payment plan. Half of the first day, the second half at approximately the six month interval. So the actual effective rate or cost to the taxpayers of the Board of Education amounts to an effective rate of 2.26%. When we inflate the current baseline, 58 million by 2.26%, the estimated cost for year one is at $59.3 million. How does that fare compare to the original contract? There's a cost avoidance of approximately $1,154,000. So given the uh, newly mediated and ratified agreement, there's $1.1 million in cost avoidance. In year two, the agreed unvalued for year two is a once again a installment payment, one and a half percent commencing on the first day of fiscal year two, and one and five eighths or one point six three percent at the six month interval. The total cost estimate of the newly ratified agreement for year two is a value of sixty one million seven hundred and ninety one thousand dollars. The increase in dollar terms is approximately two and a half million dollars in year two, and the increase in percentage terms is approximately 4.19%. Now the 4.19% has a factor of the difference between the year one 3% and the effective rate of two and a quarter percent. So there's a lagging indicator of approximately three quarters of a percent. That three quarters of a percent must be absorbed in future years. In this case, the future year is in year two. So the three quarters of percent deferred from year one and pushed back to year two will inflate the effective rate for year two to a value of 4.19%. Year two compared to the original contract is pretty much uh, comparable in terms of uh, dollar value and size. It's possibly they're both equivalent of about two and a half million dollars. An analysis of the contract over two years Two-year analysis, total salary increase. The original contract would cost approximately $5 million. The revised contract, approximately $3.8 million. So the cost avoidance over two years, $1,239,000. Insurance concessions. Pro call under the original ratified contract, the NEA Danbury Make concessions in both years of a two year term in, in the area of insurance. For the first fiscal year, 09 010, the concessions are valued at approximately $535,000. Now, as Mr. Mayor stated just moments ago, there are many variables that go into the cost factors for insurance. And we believe, or I believe at this time, that these are a the worst case scenario applied to the cost escalation factors. Some of the variables that uh, are built into the formula are the pool size, the mix of the applicant pool, uh, new entrants versus some of our existing retiring educators, uh, cost factors assigned to increases in prescription drugs analysis and in other areas. Or under the original ratified agreement, the first year concessions were valued or valued at $535,000. Year two, $795,000. With the original agreement, the union had a concessions of approximately $1.3 million. Borrowing from above, total salary increase of $5 million, offset with concessions of approximately $1.3 million over two, over two years. 
would reduce the net cost of the entire contract, very bottom line, $3.7 million. As compared to the uh, newly mediated ratified agreement. Under the mediated and subsequently ratified agreement, insurance concessions are deferred by one year. The insurance concessions will commence at the beginning of year two. So the $535,000 tied to year one for the original contract is deferred by one year. My cost estimate is $600,000. The $600,000 that applied a 12% growth factor to five thirty-five. The year two concessions of seventy nine point nine five <coughs> falls off this chart per se is because we're looking at a two-year analysis. Obviously, if there was to be a third year to the contract or if we are to negotiate a new contract commencing in year three, we would hope to, again, to further uh, seek and request concessions in the areas of insurance as we go along. Um, the total net contract cost between the two contracts, original ratified, bottom line, $3.7 million cost. The new cost of the contract over two years, 3.2. The approximate cost savings, cost avoidance over two years, about $510,000. Again, the gross value on salary alone over two years is a million two. The truly unknown variables are all associated and built into the insurance concessions. Uh, I believe to be worst case scenario this time, the $1.2 million would net to a prospect five hundred five hundred ten thousand dollars over two years. Um, so we would take questions right now. Yeah. Uh, is, is the council uh, agreeable to that, uh, even though we don't have a motion on the floor? Okay. <coughs> Any questions for Mr. Longo? Okay, I'm going to stand ready here. Go ahead, Mr. Sutton. Thank you. Through the chair, uh, as I stated in the last meeting on this, my vote is not a vote specifically on just this issue, but I look at it in context of the overall picture. The city's financial situation, the Board of Ed's financial situation, and the overall impact. That being said, I think some member of the public brought this up, the issue of other uh, employees within uh, the Board of Education, specifically going back to the issue of some of the administrators. And what I would like to know, and something that was stated on this dais in previous meetings was the idea of the concept of voluntary givebacks by some administrators and I'd like to know if anybody through the chair can respond as to whether or not that's something that's forthcoming. Where, where do you stand on the administrators? Uh, thank you, Mr. Sutton, is it okay? Uh, where do you stand on the administrators, Mr. Longo? Is there any, has anybody approached them? Has there been any entrees made to them about potential voluntary givebacks? Well, I'll have to defer to my colleague, Mr. Bray. It's not within my, my area of discipline. Uh, Mr. Bray? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Mr. Gray is the uh, HR Director uh, of the Denver Public School System. Yes, thank you. Um, excuse my voice, I've been a little bit ill. I'll try to keep it up. Um, the administrator's contract, as you all know, uh, was ratified um, and, um, sorry, it was not ratified by the board. It was ultimately turned down and it went to arbitration. It was an arbitrated award and now stands as a contract. Um, we have spoken to the administrator's bargaining group about the idea of um, the, uh, concession bargaining or at least some informal discussions about givebacks. I obviously can't go into the details of that here. Um, we do expect to be having that conversation as you might expect. They wanted to wait and see what happened with this contract. <coughs> so we do expect very shortly to be having those conversations. Is it fair to say that there's been some informal discussion? Yes. Not specifics. Mr. Dr. Pesco. Yes, we met this morning. So is it fair to say that the that there'll be further discussions with the administrators related to their contract? Yes, and they're very open to that conversation. Thank you, Ron. Just to follow up, um, it won't specifically be on the agenda, but I would hope that under the departmental report, something that we could inquire about that progress as we go along. Uh, so I know other council members aren't just going to look at it tonight, but obviously this is an ongoing process and we'd like to uh, know what the results of that are. Um, that being said, I had um, just want to confirm the overall savings over two years is approximately the $510,000 at the bottom of 
the sheet. That's correct. And one of the big concerns of myself and several of the council members was the number of potential either layoffs, I understand that there's going to be attrition and non-replacement, but actual layoffs of full-time certified teachers. And is there, and I don't know if you can answer this or someone from the Board of Education can respond or from resources, whoever it might be, to the chair, the idea that the money saved through this process and potentially through the administrators voluntarily giving back something is going to be applied to keeping as many teachers in the classroom and hopefully reduce those numbers that were presented either at the informational session before the Board of Ed or to the council previously. I think that will depend on the budget we write for this. If I could just, Kim, it's in here, and Dr. Stahl or Lou, if you want to just address this also. Really what I think we're looking at here is loss avoidance going forward, and specifically through the early retirement program, the year program offered by the board, the vast majority of staff that were potentially targeted for layoffs will be absorbed through the ERIP system. There may be several staff members who have certification issues that may not be able to absorb into the organization, and I think Mr. Bray is going to have to work that out for those folks. So really you have to look at it as position loss versus layoff, and there are positions that have been eliminated. Even if the teachers gave back all of their raises, we still could not be able to avoid positions being eliminated, and that assumes a 3% increase from the city on last year's allocation. So just so we're kind of clear about what that would mean. It's more positions eliminated than actual layoffs. Thank you, Your Honor. I understand that. Ultimately the council will vote on the proposed budget and the funding for the Board of Ed, but that's something we want to keep in mind as we go forward. And a final question. Can anybody respond as to what the actual vote was on this contract? From the teachers? From the teachers, as well as the board. The board, without breaking any, well, let me ask the chair. Good evening. I'm Sal Kessler, I'm the superintendent. I know the teachers had a meeting yesterday and they ratified today. They didn't give us a number except to say that they ratified it. The board had a special meeting tonight to meet your timeline because tomorrow is scheduled for an arbitration. So I appreciate you all coming out tonight and doing this. You do save us some money moving ahead, which hopefully that will be in position. They ratified it this evening by the vote. All that was there in one abstention. Physically. We didn't have a full, we had, I'm looking here, eight members there? Seven members. Seven members. Six, four, and one abstention. Let me just, did that answer your question? Dr. Esquivel, if you want to speak to the positions. Just to know that I think this group, this body here, put a call in front of the teachers and the board about taking you seriously about the economic conditions of the town. They did. They really did. The teachers did. The people in the classrooms did. I know the negotiating team that we had for the board, very mindful of saving jobs. That has been their only purpose. They've instructed me very clearly and very distinctly that if there's money that we're able to save, that money goes to the positions for kids, because that's what we're here to serve kids as much as, as best we can. Saying that, there's a lot of unpredictedness going on. We met with the commissioner last Friday. We're trying to figure out what is going on with the stimulus package. But you should know that the board members to the bone were happy that we were able to work with the city and do this. We felt we wanted to save positions. We don't know if we've done that. What we've done, I think as the mayor pointed out, on a micro scale, we saved more positions than if we had gone forward. We may have lost more. So we weren't willing to gamble with the lives of our kids and our teachers. But to take something in hand that we thought was fair. We met with a mediator who is pretty well known in the state and with our attorney, who's one of the top attorneys in the state, Mr. Mooney. And believe me when I tell you that advising us to do this was at the bottom line. Were we going to be able to save jobs? It had to come down on making a decision, a fiduciary decision, so that we would not cut as many jobs. Depending on what our allocation is from all of you. I'm not going to predetermine that. We know there are tough times. So you need to know we took you seriously and the teachers took you seriously. And the board did. So you don't have to fear that we are in the same town wanting the same thing. It's just been a very difficult thing for us to do. 
but in bodies leaving us, we hope, other than certification, we probably will save all of the folks that, that are leaving us. The union will work with us in transfers because of different regulations and rules about certification. We have, um, we can transfer people with permission, but in this case, we have <coughs> those that might not want to go. Uh, I think we'll work together to save as many positions as we can at this point. Depending on the stimulus package, if we get money in the stimulus package, that money is already dedicated. You can ask every board member, we'll be to those positions to reinstitute positions. Not to create more administrative programs or administrative or any of that. We will do what's right. And that's our purpose and our aim. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Just want to say, thank the teachers, the, the team from the city that negotiated. Um, I don't want to call us laying down the gauntlet, but I think the council members are very articulate in their concerns at the last meeting on this. I'm really impressed that in such a short time, the teams were able to come back with a ratified agreement, and I will be supporting this. And I do hope, and I am glad to hear that the administrators are working with human resources, working with the board, hopefully on some voluntary givebacks, but I think it's the key of everybody working together to get us through these trying times. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Senator Mr. Riley. Thank you, Your Honor. To the Chair, Director of Finance, please. Mr. Lago. Thank you very much. Uh, I, too, would like to thank each and every one that uh, were involved with the involved with the new contract that is presented to us. Uh, just for clarification, the, as I understand it, the, for the 209 to 10 year, there will be no step advancement. Is that correct? There's no step in advancement in the first in the first year for all yeah, my yes. Right. If you'd be so kind for the council of the whole, could you just um, expand on that a little bit in terms of so each and every one of us really understand what that means and maybe dollar dollar factor to it. Well, I, I don't have an analysis for you this evening based on what the equivalency would be in, in, in dollar terms. Uh, probably less than it is. Mr. Gray could kindly explain to you, uh, to the council, the step procedure or process on a teacher's contract. He can best speak to us how many steps there are in the current existing contract. Uh, in dollar terms, I, I, I apologize if I don't have the information readily available this evening to determine the offset for the first year. But is there, there is no, the, the ratified agreement does not call for a step increase in year one. And I think that's familiar <coughs> and uh, I'm sure that there, there has to be a certain amount of money that's involved with the teachers uh, voting not to accept a step level. So I, again, I, I think it's commendable, therefore I'll be voting for this. That's not just put it into, into perspective, and this is just as an exercise. If a step is valued at even 1%, or well 1% on a $60 million total cost factor is $600,000. So for each uh, for each percent uh, point on a $60 million pool, it's the equivalent of about half a million to $600,000. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Uh, further questions, discussion, Mr. Perkins? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, these contract negotiations are it's never an easy process, but I am pleased to see that we can uh, come to uh, what I believe is a fair um, arrangement for the teachers and the uh, parties. Just one quick question uh, to extend upon uh, Councilman Sadi's line of questioning. We, through your, uh, your honor, to Mr. Bright. Based on the uh, proposed individuals who were supposed to be uh, let go. We still have a, a, a number that separates normal attrition from people who were just kind of caught up in a, uh, a layoff situation. The specifics, the, the, the attrition was really built into the retirement incentive plan this year. So anyone who would have left on a retirement basis um, really took advantage of the plan. Uh, there are 71 people ultimately that are currently uh, under the plan. Some of them, we usually estimate between 20 and 25 would go in any given year. Um, as far as other people who might leave on maternity leaves, that sort of thing, we don't have that number yet. We will have it soon. 
but we can we can uh, pretty much rest assured that if there are let's just call it a cost of uh, avoidance that would be applied to the, bringing some of the people who were in line back. Or, I mean, it just uh, the mayor was commenting on this earlier. Um, you know, our numbers that have been before you assumed a uh, at least in the last go around here assumed a three percent increase from the council, but. Whatever the case is, the board is committed to trying to use the money to uh, preserve positions. And we are hopeful, as was said earlier by Dr. Pascarilla, um, and I think also by the mayor, that we'll be able to use the money um, and the retirement incentive plan process in order to save people's actual jobs and land them into positions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just a quick comment. Um, again, I am. I am um, uh, glad that we were able to come to some kind of agreement on this new contract. And also, please to hear and understand that there could possibly be some discussions for the uh, administrators to possibly give some, some uh, give backs. And I will be supporting this contract. Thanks. Mr. Perkins, further discussions? Mr. Levy. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I, uh, you know, we just got this contract. Uh, just voted on. Uh, we just got this contract a short time ago, and, and I appreciate the uh, the over, overview that uh, uh, Mr. Longo gave us. But it was uh, really a, a lot of numbers to try to, try to digest. Uh, I, but I do have some questions. As when you make reference to net cost versus gross cost, what is that? Uh, you know, how do you come up with net? And where what's the difference? In uh, basically, the difference in the concessions in the area of insurance premiums. So the net, the gross cost is the uh, natural growth applied to salaries and salaries only. Uh, part of the negotiation process, the negotiating process, the give and take is that there were concessions made under the original contract agreement by the NEA in the areas of insurance premiums. So we first calculated gross value solely based on an increase applied to salaries. Then we would reduce the concessions made by the union for a net cost to the city of Danbury. Through the chair, if I may continue. Uh, there was another uh, issue that the uh, union uh, representative brought forward about a, a difference in somewhere over a million dollars in the way they calculated uh, their insurance premium versus the way we calculated ours. How did that finally land as far as, uh, was there any mediation between that, no, that was, amount or how that, did that finally That topic, that issue was not brought up during, the, during mediation. However, I will say that we, the Board of Education, continues to work with the NEA, we are our consultants. We have an insurance consultant, they have an insurance consultant. Uh, our two consultants continue to work together uh, collectively, collaboratively on um, this million dollars. I think it's being misinterpreted or misinterpreted as a million dollars of cost that could have been realized by the Board of Education. Uh, I stand firmly on uh, my original position that this one million dollar does not exist. I believe you heard that from our consultant as well. However, we'll continue to uh, hold a discussion with the NEA, but I do share that during mediation this million dollars was not brought up. And, and the, to follow up further, how many people does this affect? Uh, how many people within this contract, the numbers of people, does this affect? Uh, 840, 850 uh, teachers. And essentially the savings are made in this first year of the contract. It's like most contracts, it's a, either or a lot. Contracts that are dealt with are either front end loaded or back end loaded. That's correct. Yes. This is a back end. Yes, what majority was his thinking on the back end loading of this contract that there be more money available in future years? Or well, yeah, are we, hope that there are better, we, we, we I believe all hope that there are better days ahead of us in terms of economics. So this is a survival mode for, for us. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to add in Mr. Dickey's comments because those are good comments. I think there is definitely a you know, a, a feeling of, of, of survival mode in this sense. But uh, yeah, I would also say that I would be very cautious with the insurance numbers because, as 
you know, Avery pointed out, there's a million dollars of floating around, and um, and that's you know, Ilya was very uh, adamant that that doesn't exist. Their their insurance uh, consultant says it does. I know they're going to send schedule a meeting to try to see if that's if that's a real thing or not. Um, so what we did on the insurance side of this was try to provide you the most conservative numbers we. Could. So, you know, in other words, this would be the worst case scenario of potential savings on, on the two years. Um, and it may not very well not turn out to be uh, front, you know, front loaded, depending on how all those numbers come back. What I would certainly suggest, and would like to see from my own application, I'm sure you would as well, and anybody else in the council, would be uh, eventually somehow some of those final insurance numbers play out as we move into the spring. And we're still calculating even our city numbers, and, you know, I know Mr. Lee has made a lot of how that goes. And, Go back and tell them to do it again. Do it again until you get what you need. So I, just want well, to I, I appreciate that, Your Honor, and, and uh, certainly I uh, supported the contract the first time around, and, and I think that the, uh, the teachers were uh, wise in accepting this one, and, 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 the, and the city would be wise in, in, uh, in accepting it as well and ratifying it. Uh, that uh, uh, we hope that our Financial woes will pass, and uh, the better time. Will pass. <laughs> Thank you. We'll deal with next year. Next year, right? That's all we can do, Mr. Kern. Mayor, are we open for a? Are we open for a uh, <coughs> acceptance of this? Uh, I believe the motion would be uh, to receive the con receive and accept the contract. We don't technically ratify it, so that motion would not be in order. Uh, the second would be required, then we can have some more discussion. I'll make that motion. So motions, uh, Mr. Kern has made a motion to receive and accept uh, the report. Mr. Rotella has seconded. Is there any further discussion along the way? Mr. Chinese. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a question that's actually going to be directed to you. As you know, this, this contract is always geared upon the, the city's ability to pay. So my question is, can this, do you feel comfortable in this contract with the city, the city obligation to give them the funding to achieve this no. I mean, the fact of the matter is we're facing an unprecedented economic tidal wave, and I don't feel comfortable with any contract that's been negotiated. So I don't know if that's the right question to ask, but the right question is, are you comfortable with the process, and do you think that this is the best deal that the taxpayers and the Board of Ed City can get at this time? The answer to that question is yes. So we still got a long, we got a lot of work to do with the upcoming budget. As uh, Mr. St. Hilaire and I have already begun, probably halfway through drafting it. I don't know if we can meet the, uh, the request of the Board of Ed at three percent. Uh, remember, you know, each year that the school budget goes up, that three percent or six percent is a much bigger number to meet because your your your, your, your school budget continues to grow. So we're going to do the best we can. Um, Dr. I worked, I probably work closer with Dr. Pascarella and, and Mr. Longo and Mr. Gray and, 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 and the chairperson of the Board of Ed, Sue, and uh, the other Board of Ed than ever before on, on this process and project, but it's going to be a tough year, and we're going to do everything we can to try to, to, to meet them, but um, it's going to be difficult. Mr. Visconti. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with this contract, my question would be then, where would we find the money? Do we have the money or we don't have the money? Is this built into the, into their budget that we're going to offer them? Well, their 115 million request included the old ten tentative agreement. So that, that was already built into the request. Their assumption was that they would have to fund the full, the full contract. Um, my problem is I don't know if we can get to 115. But that doesn't mean the contract doesn't get funded. It just means that the board's going to have to go back and roll up the states and, and do more work. Uh, you know, we have other, you know, we have an insurance company that we just frankly don't know what that's going to be. We've got uh, some uh, cards left to play in that game in terms of trying to reduce our insurance number. But I just want to be clear, I'm comfortable with the process and I'm comfortable with that. I think that this is the best deal we're going to get. You know, I'm not comfortable with any increases in any department right now. I mean, that's just, the, you know, unlike other years where we could have an increase in the department because we want to do some different things. Those days are, are gone, and they're not coming back anytime soon. So I, I just want to kind of clarify my comments. Mr. President. Thank you again, Your Honor. I'm not sure who to direct this question to, but what I'd like to ask is, outside of the numbers, were there any other uh, substantial or notable changes to the contract? No. 
um, except with the exception of year two. I think I want to mention the language changes too, Dr. Vincent. The, the agreement was that the language would stay static. There would be no change in this year's language. So the language that we have now that's guiding our employees will guide them next year. That's that stays. Um, the following year, we'll have the language change so that it would have realized the same cost savings that the original language provided the benefits. In addition to the benefits portion, there were things such as transfers, and other things that we uh, negotiated with that will come into effect the second year of the contract. But um, those that language is what you received last time in front of you. That language there is not in effect till next year, so that will be our language for the coming, for two years down the road. Okay. Thank you. And uh, just one other thing I just want to mention. This contract does not have a third year. In the contract in front of you before, there was a th the third year was a reopener for negotiation, we'll really have to just do, and we'll be, we'll, we will be negotiating the next contract in about 15 months from now. Um, what is positive about this contract is that it sets, you know, Mr. Visconti, is that it sets the stage for the next, as you well know, from your years in the fire department, for the next round of negotiations. So we have insurance, further insurance concessions that will now be on the table. Uh, we have a, a wage structure that's been compressed that's positive for us. Uh, and now we have a, a past practice that's put in place that could be helpful in the next round. Sorry. Ms. Stanley, any questions? Okay. Any other questions? We do have a motion on the floor. Seeing none, then I'll try your minds. The motion is to receive and accept the contract as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition? <coughs> motion carries the evidence. And I want to thank the uh, teachers that are in the room. I appreciate uh, you guys stepping to the plate. Gladys, Mr. T, Kathy, thanks for hanging out with me at 1 a.m. It was fun. Let's do it again not too soon, though. And uh, Super Justin, thank you for everything you've done. And really, Dr. Sal, really thank you.